Hey everybody, this is going to be my review of the Casio WVA 470 Wave Scepter Tough Solar and a Digi Watch. Okay, so let's start by taking a look at the uh, just the overall way it's built. You can see here it appears to be mostly metal. Um, to be fair, we should note that the the case itself is uh, gray plastic, and then it's got a stamping that covers the front. So we got kind of a fake timing bezel here <clears throat> that bothered me at first but you don't notice it after a while uh, and then we got another stamping here just above the bracelet matching one on the top the usual um, stainless steel case back held on by four screws uh, but it, I think you'll agree it doesn't come across looking cheap you might be disappointed if you're expecting a metal case but it's comfortable and it looks nice and it was uh, affordably produced so that's good um, as I said the bezel doesn't rotate because it's just part of the stamping that clips onto the plastic case um, the buttons you'll see are nice and big they're actually big enough to to mate with the whole tip of your finger which is nice and they're not recessed in there like some of the G-Shocks are where, to where they'll be really hard to push um, so it may not be as tough as a G-Shock uh, looking at it from a side view, you can see the crystal is domed um, and it doesn't have a, the G-Shock bezel that comes up above the edge to prevent it from being scratched, so it's going to be easier to scratch. It's 100 meters water resistant, so you can go swimming with this, not worry about rain or hand washing or anything like that. Okay, the bracelet, this is one thing I was surprised about. Um, it doesn't really say in the specs, but the bracelet is made out of uh, solid stainless steel links. Um, and the pins are also solid. They're not folded over ones, um, split pins, like on uh, some watches that are a lot higher end than this. Um, but you do, when you're resizing it, you have to watch out because when you take the pins, there's little collars that go inside the, the center part of the link. And they're very tiny. They're about a tenth the size of a pin and they're just a little tube. And without those little collars, uh, the pins don't have any tension inside the bracelet so make sure you keep track of those when you're popping links out and resizing it as far as resizing it goes you can get a, a resizing uh, you know a basic watchmaking tool kit at Amazon for probably about seven or eight dollars it includes a bracelet resizing tool that'll do this great otherwise if you don't want to spend the money on that you can just get a, um, a small paper clip um, a, a needle nose pliers and, uh, and then another pair of pliers just to use as an anvil with an opening. Okay, yeah, so the bracelet, very comfortable. Um, most of the links that it came with, uh, maybe not most of them, but a lot of them are, um, are removable links. I don't know if you can see here, but there's arrows on the ones that are removable. And I took out five of them to fit my six and seven eighth inch circumference wrist. So it'll fit a pretty big wrist and it'll fit a pretty small wrist. And it's also worth noting that um, the way that they're integrated into the case, it doesn't have any big cracks that are going to catch, uh, catch hair and pull it. So it's about the most comfortable bracelet I've ever had. And I've had some really nice ones. I have one on my Omega Seamaster Pro. Um, I had a new Rolex Explorer last year. That was a nice bracelet too, but uh, none of them were more comfortable than this. Um, and then the clasp, you can see, is just a, um, a stainless steel stamping. But I like how it doesn't have a flip lock. A lot of people like to have a flip lock and the side release buttons, but that's kind of overkill. Then you have to dig your nail under there, flip that open, and do this. It just turns out to be a lot of work. And this is plenty secure. You can't just push one and get it open. You have to push both at the same time. So... <clears throat> All right, uh, onto the analog display. Um, you can see there's no crown here, which to me that was a good sign because on the old Anadigi watches, and actually a lot of them now that are cheaper than this, <clears throat> that if you have a crown here and then you have a digital movement and they're set separately, um, they're always out of sync. And this one, when, uh, when it syncs, it sets them both at the same time. Um, and so when you set one time or when the atomic clock sets one time it also sets the the time on the uh, on the digital display <clears throat> let's see if I can get to what I want here 
Okay, onto the digital display. Uh, in the timekeeping mode, you can either have it display the digital time, the day of the week and the date, uh, the seconds, and when you're in the seconds mode, you can see the satellite dish if you hit this button here. It'll tell you when the last sync was, so in this case this morning at 4.04 a.m. And it just cycles through that until you hit this uh, D button again. <clears throat> but I like to have it on day date. Um, and then the next mode <clears throat> is the battery status. That's it. This is the mode button down here. This is button C in the Casio manual. And then we have world time. So in Paris right now, it's 9.45 p.m. And you scroll through the different times by uh, different world times by pushing this button. So Berlin, 8.45, Athens, 9.45, etc. Go through all the different versions, uh, regions in the world. Next we have the alarm mode. There's three independent alarms. Uh, they're daily alarms. So you can't set them to go off on a certain day and date. But So we have alarm one. You turn it on or off by pushing A button here. And if you hold the A button down for a couple of seconds, that lets you set the alarm time. Alarm two, alarm three, and hourly signal. That's just the old-fashioned double beep at the top of every hour. Next mode, stopwatch. It's a one one thousandth of a second stopwatch with a split time uh, and two finishes. So start and stop here. And then if you stop it, six seconds, 31 thousandths. When it's going, if you hit the A button, that'll do the split time. So you can write down a, you know, the time finishing. Hit it again, it goes back to normal. Stop, reset. The next mode is that if you want to manually set the hands, um, now I don't know why you'd want to do this. I guess if you bought this watch and you were in a zone that didn't have the atomic sync, like I think Europe doesn't work here with this watch. Maybe there's a different version that works for Europe, but this one works for Japan and the US. Uh, and th that's pretty involved if you want to separate the analog from the digital and it's kind of involved to get them back in sync too so make sure you really want to do that um, it doesn't have a, a three and a half a minus three and a half um, offset from GMT time for Newfoundland so maybe that would be one situation I don't know if you just noticed here but the minutes hand just moved every 20 seconds that moves and then back to the regular display so I like this because it has a nice clear analog display uh, and it also has a lot of the, the digital goodies that I like. I never have to worry about the battery or, um, or if the time is correct uh, because it's, you know, it's atomic, it's always correct. So there you have it, the Casio WVA70, oh, sorry, 470, and that's what it looks like on a 6 and 7 8 inch wrist. It's 42 millimeters across here. Um, most 42 millimeter watches are too big on me, but this one has a good shape to the uh, uh, the built-in bracelet. So there you have it. I really like this watch. I think if I could only have one watch in my whole collection, this would be it. It's got the analog time, which I like. It's got the digital features, which I like. Um, and it doesn't really have too many drawbacks. Um, June 2012, I paid about $103 for this on Amazon. So there you have it. Thanks for watching.